guys, my name is Jordan Riley and I'm one of the owners of Captured Creative and today I'm going to be running you through another edition of EXO's What's in My Pack. Um, and today I'm just going to kind of talk with you about what I packed with on a late season elk hunt last fall um, in Idaho. So I ran the EXO 3500 pack uh, with the integrated dry bag, uh, which is uh, super important as a photographer and a cinematographer to have to keep all the gear nice and safe regardless of the conditions that you're in. Uh, it's been super nice to run it this way and not have to worry about, uh, you know, gear getting wet or, you know, any other kind of moisture getting in the pack. So in addition to that, to keep all of my camera gear safe, I have a um, camera padding that sits on the bottom of the pack and it's an open top. Um, so it, it keeps it uh, nice and snug at the bottom of the pack and keeps any extra bodies or lenses safe. Um, and it doesn't have a zip top lid, which is super nice when you're just trying to reach in and grab stuff. Um, but because of that, um, it's obviously exposed to anything that could fall into the pack on the bottom. Um, so to kind of uh, further protect it, I just put soft layers like a puffy jacket or something when I'm not wearing it, just to kind of keep everything safe in there. So moving on to the camera gear for this particular trip, I ran two Canon 5D Mark IV cameras. Uh, which I'm actually filming with now. Um, they're a great uh, weatherproof camera with a magnesium alloy body, so they're super tough. Uh, they can take on some weather, uh, as long as it's not a super soaking downpour. You're going to be just fine, and they do a great job in low light too. Uh, the next part of the kit would be the lenses. And on this trip, I always had two, both cameras out at all times. Uh, usually one with the Canon 70-200 2.8 version 2. Um, this is a workhorse of a lens. It was probably used a good 60% of the time out there just because of the versatility and the background compression that you can get at 200 millimeters um, when you're wide open at 2.8 is super impressive for both photo and video. So that's, that was one of the main workhorses. The other one, uh, which is a pretty basic and pretty common one, but it's still definitely has its place, is the Canon 24 to 70 uh, 2.8 version two. Um, great mid-range zoom lens. You got, you know, 24 millimeters is nice and wide for any landscape or wider stuff. And 70 is a great, great place to be at too for those moments when you need to pull in just for a little bit more punch. Um, usually I'll throw in one more specialty lens. This trip it was a Canon 100 uh, macro 2.8 lens. Uh, this lens is incredible, especially if you are successful and get something down. Um, it's a great lens to grab, you know, details of you know, elk hide or antlers or anything else that you might see on the animal, um, as well as details of things like hands. Um, you know, if somebody's working on an elk or working on a quarter that, you know, maybe got some gritty or bloody hands, it's always cool to be able to pull in and focus less than a foot away um, and capture the detail there. So that's what that lens was used for. It does a great job as well. And I should mention too that all of these lenses are also weather sealed too. Um, so you don't have to worry about uh, moisture or water getting in there either, as long as it's not a, you know, downpour. Um, other gear that I brought with on this particular trip was just a super basic um, battery-less battery shotgun mic, just for grabbing a little bit better audio. Most of the time it's just for scratch audio or something like that anyways, where either you need to sync it up to your wireless lav mic in post, or you just want a little bit better quality um, natural sound as you're going through the mountains. Um, which moving on to, that's something else that I carry, is this Audio-Technica uh, wireless pack. Uh, works super well, especially when you've got people uh, moving up in front of you and um, you want to capture what they're saying. Uh, it, it works super well for that. I pair that with a Zoom H1 recorder. Um, so all I have to do is plug the receiver into the Zoom, um, hit record, put lock on so nothing can happen, shove it in my pocket, and um, it makes for a little bit more work in post, but I would rather have the audio and have to look for it than not have it and be stuck without it. Um, something else, kind of moving on to the camera support that I bring with me. Uh, one is just a basic glide cam. Uh, it's not for every single shot, but it is nice to be able to throw the camera up on there, um, balance it, and get some super smooth shots, either following a subject or kind of tracking them as they walk without any big jolts or jerks from from you walking either, it makes for some super smooth cinematic looking footage. Um, it is a little bit heavy, uh, but it does fit to the outside of the pack super nice and it's a really good option to have. Moving on from there is a tripod. Uh, for this trip I ran a, just a basic carbon fiber tripod. 
uh, fairly lightweight and fairly stable. I paired that with the Manfrotto. Um, it's the 500 AH fluid head. A little bit smaller fluid head, but it still definitely has some weight to it. Uh, super smooth option, especially when you're doing video work. Um, addition, in addition to that camera gear, um, one of the things that I always bring with when I'm on a video shoot as well um, is a pouch full of filters. And on this trip, it was full of ND filters for video work. Um, these range anywhere from a three stop to a six stop. Um, I don't use variable NDs. I just find the quality to not be as good. So these are just, um, just single, single range um, ND filters. Um, and it allows me to shoot video and keep the proper shutter speed while shooting at a wide open aperture uh, to really blow the background out and make it look nice and cinematic. Um, I always bring plenty of cards on um, this trip. I think I brought right around 500 gigs of SD cards for a six day trip, uh, which depending on how many, you know, time lapses or how much uh, like 4K video that I'm shooting can be eaten up fairly quickly. Um, it's just nice to have a bunch of options that way. I usually throw a few smaller cards, like a 16 gig card in, um, in addition to the 64s and 128s, just for time lapses. I can throw a 16 gig card in the 5D and know that it's going to run about 340 photos in a time lapse, which is, um, it gives you plenty of flexibility in post to kind of determine how long you, you want that to be. In my stash pouch that kind of lives in the hood of my pack, um, I have a bunch of different lens wipes. Um, you can never have enough of those depending on the conditions. If it is wet, you always want a dry uh, microfiber cloth to be able to clean your lens with, as well as a lens cleaning wipe. Um, this one's by Zeiss. Um, it just helps you get a little bit, a little bit more clean, we'll get some of that dirt and grime off of there if you've been out there for a little while. Also in here, I kept all my batteries for this trip. I think I brought seven. Um, you can usually plan on at least one battery a day. These ones are fairly small, so it's not that big of a deal just to throw a bunch of them and not have to worry about charging them when you're back there. <clears throat> so that kind of rounds out the camera gear that was with me um, on that trip. And now I'll kind of move into more of the uh, backcountry essentials. Uh, this trip last October was a trip with llamas, which was awesome. They carried um, all of the food um, as well as tents and sleeping bags. So that was, that was huge. Um, I'll show you what I ran there a little bit later. But in my pack also lived just a little safety kit, a um, couple lighters, duct tape, a whistle, emergency blanket, um, just some, you know, like antacid pills, ibuprofen. Um, as well as some athletic tape, just in case something were to happen. It's always good to have. Um, as well as a couple tools. Um, I always keep a pocket knife on me. It works good as a standard screwdriver if you need it in a pinch. And it's just, just nice to carry, as well as just a micro screwdriver kit and a hex set, just in case something were to happen to any of the camera gear. I'd be able to uh, get it fixed enough to use for the rest of the trip there. Primary diet for this trip was Mountain House and any kind of granola bar that you can think of. Uh, so a long-handled spoon is definitely key. Uh, it keeps the knuckles clean uh, when, you're, when you're digging through those nice Mountain House pouches. And I always keep a couple headlamps on me just in case one were to die. Um, try to replace the batteries every time I go out too. It's just nice to have the peace of mind knowing that you've got two going in. Uh, this one is a black diamond. I'm not sure of the model. And this is just a standard Petzl. Um, cheap, but it works. And kind of rounding out the gear, this was a cold weather trip. Uh, temperatures were anywhere between, you know, 15 degrees at night all the way up to probably close to the 60s during the warmest day. So I definitely brought with plenty of gear to stay warm. Um, and for the most part, these lived in the pack, but the puffy pants from First Light were super nice. Uh, after you crawl out of your nice warm sleeping bag in the morning before it's, it's light outside, it's nice just to throw these on, stay warm while you have your coffee and, and uh, start the day out on the, on the right note, that's for sure. Um, paired with that was the Uncompagre puffy jacket. Um, just super nice gear, super lightweight. It also works really well as camera padding when you're not wearing it. Uh, just throwing it in your pack and not having to worry about your gear getting tossed around. So it works really great for that as well. 
Um, and to kind of continue with the cold weather gear, the Grizzly gloves, um, kind of, it was kind of a morning thing too with the pants. It was nice to throw these on over the Talus fingerless gloves, which I basically wear all day long. And it allows me to, you know, have dexterity for things like lenses and cameras. You can, can still feel everything that you need to and be confident with the shots that you're getting. Um, but the pack was plenty big to throw all of this stuff, the kind of the, the more burly cold weather stuff inside once the day warmed up. Um, it didn't have to be dangling from the outside of the pack or anything, which was really nice. Um, I always run Nalgene bottles. I had a couple with. Um, I'd bring one with as we were hunting out of camp and kind of keep one in camp. Um, but the reason I do this is even though there's the dry bag in the pack with all the camera gear and electronics, it's just one more little peace of mind for me to know that my water is not going to end up soaking my gear um, and effectively ruining the shoot or the trip that I'm on. Um, so I just keep the water outside of the pack. Um, hasn't failed me yet. It works really well and it's a system that that I like as a photographer just to not have to worry about your gear getting wrecked. Going to the sleep system, um, I'm running Nemo gear. The sleeping pad that I've got is the Cosmo. Uh, it's the one with the integrated foot pump. It's a little bit heavier, uh, but like I said on this trip, the llamas carried it anyways, which is awesome. Uh, super nice. It keeps the hot, moist air out of your pad as well. Um, super comfortable. I think it's three inches thick. Uh, it's, like a, it's like a mattress out there, which is tough to beat. Um, and paired with that, uh, Nemo sleeping bag. This is a lighter one um, out there. I ran a zero degree bag, uh, super warm. Didn't have, to, didn't have to layer up with all the clothing while you're out there. It was just nice to be able to crawl in and, and sleep well. So that kind of rounds out everything that I had with on that trip. Um, until, you, until you get back to the truck, get back to your computer and back up the cards, there's always kind of that wondering if you got it all. But um, as long as you're keeping your gear safe and dry, you can. And this pack definitely helps me to be able to be able to do that and fulfill a, a full shoot like that. So if you have any other questions, feel free to reach out. Uh, social media link is at Captured Creative on Instagram. You can find us on Facebook. Uh, and you can find me on my personal at Jordan S. Riley on Instagram. Thanks.